Welcome back to another episode of Survival Worldwide on Reality Pop. I've got a very special guest here with me today. It's the Lara Croft of Survivor South Africa, Island of Secrets, Steffi Brink, or from Vake Brink, I should say. Steffi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. It's really early in the morning here, and it's really late in the evening over there. So um, I really appreciate you. Uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning here at the moment, so we're almost exactly in the opposite time zones, but I'm used to like phoning back home different times in the morning and things like that, or late at night. It's normally the middle of the day when I'm speaking to anybody in South Africa um, that's a little bit difficult because that's like in the middle of my night on this side. You've got a really beautiful view there in the backdrop. I don't know if you want to show people a little bit of the, the, the backdrop there. You've got, um, I believe you said you're in Johannesburg at the moment. Yes, I'm in Johannesburg. Um, so this is Ruedekrans. Um, yeah, it's uh, the most amazing view. I mean, um, I love sitting here. <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice. Um, now, Steffi, I wanted to ask you, you you know, played Survivor over in South Africa. Were you a fan of the show? Was it something that you saw on TV and you thought, listen, this would be interesting? How did you sort of get into this whole Survivor thing? Because it is pretty, there's a big fandom out there, which I'm sure you're very aware of now that you've played the game. So I actually, um, like a couple of days ago, I think it was a week and a half ago, I went um i scrolled through my facebook um timeline stories and um the memories and i it it came uh, like a memory came up um in 2013 when i said you know i'm gonna play survivor one day so yes i've always been a fan i've always been a fan of survival you know um like big roles you know those type of elements um, because I loved camping, I grew up on a farm. Um, and then also the elements of people, you know, the social aspect of, of the game. It really intrigued me as a kid as well, you know. Um, but I never realized how, how tough it actually is. It's not just about surviving the exterior, like the external elements, um, the people, the people. Mm. Now, <laughs> and that's the most it's important part. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's a, it's a very mental game as well when you're out there because you obviously, you're, you're starving and you're having to deal with people and they, they cast people very carefully there that will either clash with your personality or get along with your personality type as well. I wanted to roll back, you mentioned that you grew up on a farm and it kind of explains a little bit, you know, there's that scene between you and um, Doral later on in the season where you've got to kill the chicken <laughs> and, and Doral clearly was freaked out by that, but you ended up sort of doing the job. Job. Um, would that be like having grown up on a farm? Was that something you were used to, or was it something that you just thought, I'm hungry, I need to step up to the plate here and do what needs to be done? The thing is, people don't understand when you when you grow up on a farm, um, you like um every month um there would be a slaughter of she sheep or any any mm. thing, you know, and and sorry for the vegans out there. Um <laughs> But, and Nessu this season. <laughs> I don't know uh, if you've seen this season's cast, but yeah, but like Anesu in this I, season that's coming up, she's a vegan. So yeah. So sorry, oh, Anesu, if you're I listening to this. I haven't, I haven't, I'm guilty. I haven't looked at the cast yet. Um, um, I'm, I think I'm going to, let me, let me sit with the rest of the, with the rest of the world and watch the first episode without, uh, uh, you know, stalking people. Um, yeah. So that I can have my clear, um, yeah, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. So you can't have a favorite. Um, yeah. We only see, we only see a glimpse of what happens on, on the island. Yeah. I was going to say, Steffi, um, you know, you saying that I can't have a favorite. You were my favorite female player for this season. So I really enjoyed watching you play the season. I liked the fact that you were cutthroat in your approach and you did what needed to be done while you were out there. And one of the things that I mentioned to Rob Bentele when I spoke to him, uh, quite a few months ago now, cause he came on our show to talk about why international viewers should watch Survivor South Africa. Um, I mentioned to him, like, if there was ever a season where we had South Africa, Australia, and like the US play against each other, which would be every fan's dream to see something like that happen, wow. that you would be the first woman that I would want to cast to represent South Africa because you're such an athlete. You would be someone that would be good in the challenges and things like that. So, 
you know, you've got quite a, 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 a resume when it comes to being an athlete, um, having done, you know, I believe you've done athletics up to a pretty high level for Namibia. Recently, I, I had seen that you were doing something with the Survivor, I don't know, the South African Sevens team, the rugby team, I believe it was. How did your athletics and everything that you did outside of the game sort of help you within the game? And do you feel like it did bring a different mental edge for you when you went into a game like Survivor? I think Survivor, like, because it's there's a lot of elements where you need to have mental toughness. A lot of people that don't that don't know how to uh, participate, not just participate, but compete, um, be in the competitive environment, they lack mental toughness. So those people usually crack under pressure. So I must say that really played an in important part, an integral part in, in my gameplay. And um, I'm just thankful, man. I, I started competing um, in athletics I did wrestling, um, I did bodybuilding, I did sevens rugby. So I've been in individual sports and then also in team setups. Um, like I played hockey, netball as well. So so that social, that also um, helps you to to become social from a very young age. Uh, people mm. that, that don't have that level of exposure you know because you you have to share rooms when you go on tour um to different states or different provinces or countries you have to share um a space um with people and uh that really i i think definitely my upbringing helped me be uh get to where i got in the game now, I'm going to ask you a question here, which might go completely over your head or not, but I'm going to throw it out there because I know that people listening to this would want me to ask you this question. Um, have you ever heard of a show called The Challenge at all? And if you have heard of it, would you be interested in playing like a show like The Challenge, for instance? The Challenge? Over your head? The Challenge. It's called The oh, Challenge. Oh, so it's oh, a, my head. over your head. Show? Okay. Yeah. Give me Let a me sell it to you. I'll, I'll give you a yes or a no. Okay, so let me sell it to you. So the reason that I'm asking you this question is because Rob Bentele was rumored to have been contacted by The Challenge over in the US. It's a reality show in the wow. US. It's all about um, athleticism. It's all about going out there and competing. You still vote people out, but you vote them out and then they can take someone else on in an arena where they go up against each other physically. So you can't just get voted out like you did in Survivor without you having a fighting chance of staying in the game. And at the end of the day, the person who is the most athletic and wins the most challenges, they're the one who actually wins the whole show. So it's also been similar to Survivor. It's been on air for over 30 seasons now. I believe the next season that'll come out is season 37. So I'm, I'm sure... I'm, I, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, that's no, 100% fine. It. But but I would definitely um, uh, I love I love competitiveness I love being competitive I love competing. Yeah, because when I saw yeah. you on Survivor, immediately I thought you would be someone that if they were to cast you on a show like that, you would absolutely kill it. Like because it is all about that athleticism. I think you've got the right stuff to go on a show like that and do extremely well. And um, uh, I know that there's rumors out there, and I, I think that. Rob at some point was contacted, but obviously with the travel restrictions and things like that in South Africa at the moment, it was pretty difficult for them to to do anything in regards to that. And like I said, I don't know any definite information for anybody listening to this. It's all a rumor in the endo, but I, I just thought I'd ask you that question. Now, going back to Survivor, um, when you first got onto the beach, you formed a pretty close bond really early on with the Amigos. What was it that sort of drew you to the different people within the Amigos there in the beginning and what made you want to work with them? The thing is you need to you need to kind of um, align yourself with strength, right? And that's that's like I, I had a game plan before getting into the game. I, I said that I because I'm a strong, I'm an alpha female. Um, and because my personality is is that strong sorry i just need to <laughs> move the dog That's okay. out, out of the way uh because my my character and my um personality um i come across as, as very strong i needed to find myself with an alpha male and latch on to to an alpha male so that i can get the 
attention off of me. And that was my game plan. Mm. So it's just um, a bummer that Nico had exactly the same game plan. And it's like it was a competition between between the two of us, you know, getting Rob on our side. Yeah, but it's interesting because you mentioned that and a lot of the times when you look at a show like Survivor, when you've got an alpha male and an alpha male, they clash or an alpha female and an alpha female, they clash. But for the longest period of time, you were able to work with Nicole until quite deep in the game where she obviously ultimately cut you towards the end of the game. But, you know, I was quite impressed by the fact that you managed to work with her. One of the other things for me that sort of stood out here in the early portions of the game was your relationship with Nathan. And obviously you ended up going to the tribe swap and you ended up on the same tribe as Nathan. Can you talk a little bit towards how your relationship was with Nathan? Um, you seemed at times like you, you, you're you not the mothering type, so you struggle to deal with the fact that he was struggling out there. Um, talk us through that relationship a little bit. Look, I, I really, like I, to say I love Nathan um, yeah. is a very strong, is a very strong statement, but really that is like, because Nathan's, um sister is married to my husband's um cousin so actually okay. so he knew me before the game and um so we kind of we kind of became family on the game because you know someone that i know so 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 mm. it, 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 that that level of closeness is important in a game like survivor um with the tribe sh shuffle it was a bit difficult for me um, because that mental toughness element started lacking because if this is a guy that's fit, like I, I stopped, I, I changed my entire uh, diet before going on to Survivor so that I can, so that I could cope with, do you hear that? So, so that I, could I couldn't cope. hear it loud. It sounded like a car or something driving past, yeah. but couldn't hear it very loud. So that I, because I needed to to learn how to cope with um, with not getting food, with starvation, and I think that's that's one of the elements that get to a lot of people. Like Rocco also struggled mm. with 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 a food deprivation and all of that, and I think that's that's what what played that was that's what worked against Nathan. Um, and I am a tough love kind of person, mm. so I try to to console him in the best way possible, and I try to keep his head in the game by, you know, doing positive affirmations. And um, I spoke to him about, you know, staying in the game. And yeah, it was difficult. It was very difficult to mm. to crack that nut. <laughs> And it was a shame because it looked like Nathan was somebody that could have been extremely capable in the game. You know, he actually had a lot of airtime in the show before, obviously, he was ultimately voted out. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about was when you got to the merge, when Nicole goes and do her, her apology speeches to every single person within the Amigos, you were the one that seemed like you forgave her the quickest um, in that time. Was it a fair representation on the show of the fact that you were completely okay with the fact that she made this big move before the merge or you know was there more going on that we didn't potentially see because you were seen say, saying at that point to to nicole no listen i would have cut him a long time ago you know and um the rest of them seemed like they were a little bit more bothered by the fact that he was voted out the thing is they didn't see they didn't see what happened on the ground you know they, they weren't on the mm. ground level they they didn't know how difficult it was to 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 stay positive within yourself and still carry your fellow amigo, because mm. because it's it's this game it's cutthroat. You know, if you if you lag behind, you're gonna get voted voted off. And if if people see and they sense weakness within an alliance, um, like if they sense weakness, you become just as weak so i was actually the the spokesperson between nicole rob and sipay i went to and that's what they didn't show um 
I forgave Nicole because I knew what was what was happening behind the scenes. And there's a lot that you guys don't know that happened behind yep. the scenes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a game, and we need to we need to as as much as it is a game, there's still elements of humanity in it. And um, if you see someone, if you like, we were close, like. The conversations we had on the island is not what you guys see. You mm. you go deep into someone's present and past. You know, you get to know someone's personality, um, some of the deeper mm. secrets. You know, uh, because um, it's that intimate. And when you get to know someone on that level, it's difficult not to get emotional. No, I hear you 100%. I mean, I always look at this in the sense of when you see people go out in the army or navy and they suffer together, there's this brotherhood that gets created between people suffering together. And that's why um, I think it's an appropriate time to bring this question in as well. Tensions were pretty high on that specific tribal council where Jack didn't play his idol, right? So, um, and at that point, you obviously needed to let off some steam there and, and have a go at him. How 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 much of that did we see? How much of that, you know, sort of like you mentioned, was due to the fact that, like you said, you you're sleeping next to these people, you're suffering next to these people, and it was just sort of boiling over at that point. Can you talk to to that at all? Because we've we've heard a little bit. Jack's been on here. He's told us a little bit about it. He said he needed to move away from the camp that night and go sleep separately because he felt like you know it was just too intense at that point for him he didn't say anything bad on here but he just said you know he needed to move away um can you talk to that a little bit as well from from your side in regards to what happened and sort of what was the fan reception like in south africa after that because i can tell you internationally um no one has ever seen something like that and a lot of people were shocked at the intensity of that specific moment on the show and um, there's a lot of people internationally that watches Survivor South Africa, and a lot of them listen to this podcast specifically. Can you talk to that moment at all and sort of what went on behind the scenes? So I was kept out of the loop in that tribal council with regards to voting. So um, we had to pin our votes, right? Half year, mm. other half day. And I knew that there were two or three people gunning for me especially say two. So if someone flipped on the other side and I was sitting, I sat in, in, in tribal council, in the tribal council, and I made my calculations. If one of, if one of the other people flipped, I would have been voted out. Mm. So instead of voting for Jacques, for Jacques, for Jacques I voted for Corvus. And I had to play the game to say, okay, guys, I forgot to, to vote for. Because yeah. it's better to be seen as a blonde than to be seen like someone that's, you know, that doesn't trust you. Either that doesn't trust you or that um, is actually playing their own game. So what I did was... <laughs> When we got, when we arrived, because I knew I was, I was like, what am I going to do now? I'm on my way to, to, to the, to the camp. I was like, what am I going to do now? Because, um, that was inexcusable, you know, who does something like that? Yeah. So what am I going to say? So I had to play the dumb blonde and that for me was stepping back and actually going into a, a place where you you have to cultivate total humility mm. because you actually humiliating yourself now even though you know this is not um but put the pride aside and humble yourself and that's what i did and he did exactly the opposite so when he started swearing um, yeah, you know, when he started swearing, um, Letitia got really upset and there were, there were a lot of people speaking and there was a commotion happening and it took, it took a while for me to register what was actually happening. Mm. And 
I just felt that I needed to stand up for, for the tribe and I needed to stand up for myself because I've always been in an environment where I've, I've, I've been like a clay rugby. I've got a brother that's old, mm. it's older than like two, 12, 14 months older than me. So we, we grew up like that. So I always had to defend myself and mm. it was just the trigger. Yeah. Um, it was just the trigger and um, the response from the from the public was very bad. Um, imagine I did an anti-bullying boxing. Um, I, com- I, I did a boxing match a year prior to Survivor and now you get accused of being a bully in the game. Mm. It was a bit, you know, because people didn't understand where it came from. They just saw one side of it. They didn't, mm. they were not present, present. They did not feel the emotions happening because it was, it, it was a few things that compounded. No, that's, that, that's well put. And, and like I said, you know, when you're out there, there is a lot that I think we as fans need to, like, obviously we don't condone any bullying or anything like that in general. And I think that in your normal life, you wouldn't have reacted to something no. like that the same way angry. you reacted out on the island. I as well. <laughs> um, and I just felt that I needed to stand up for myself. You know, yeah. But I, it have, wasn't have you and Jack made peace since that? Have you spoken to him about it? Um, how are you guys yeah, now? I apologized, and um, I mean, a lot of people apolo- apologized for what happened. Um, yeah. But if you ask me, would I do it again? If I was in that mo- in that setting, I would probably do it again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. because because. You don't know how intense the emotions run at that level. If I wasn't hungry, I would have probably handled the situation differently. Maybe now that I'm mm. a bit older and more mature, I would yeah. probably, you know, handle things differently. But uh, yeah, and South Africans are fighters I in general, and it's something that people don't realize. It's a it's a cultural thing that in South Africa you fight for your little green space that you have over there. So you put them in an environment where they feel like they're fighting for their life, then naturally that side is going to come out. Like um, obviously, uh, like you know, in that case, it wasn't the greatest, but we understand. Like you know, I definitely, I think I appreciate it more than the general person watching the show. Um, I've spoken to a lot of survivors and, you know, I'm in that circle across the board. So I kind of get that there's a lot that we don't see and a lot of things going on. And I think people need to keep that into consideration. I do want to move on from that. And there's a bunch of other great things that happened on the show. Obviously you were the person that was sent and you sometimes sent yourself to the Island of Secrets more than anybody else. But the only real advantage you got on you know, being sent to the island was well, obviously food at times, but you know, you had your friend come out there to give you a little bit of an advice in regards to the game. When she came out there and sort of told you to think about the game differently, and you started thinking about the fact that maybe you do need to get rid of Rob, was that something that was festering in the back of your mind for a long time? And she kind of just gave you the permission to betray Rob at that point if you needed to, or was it really a case of her taking you out of the game and making you? look at it differently when she came out there how much of it was tv magic because on the tv it kind of looked like she came in there and told you to change your game plan but i'm assuming that this was something that was sort of in your mind for a while you know when you when you get when you get further in the game um look i had no advantages i didn't have any idols and my social game was also not as great because i didn't want to get too close to people because i'm Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to speak about my personality so that if I get into the game, people don't know how to psychoanalyze me. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, you know, don't allow people too close to you. So, um, and because I'm a very competitive person, I was a bit serious. You know, you get, you get serious. I was in some sense a bit too serious, you know. So my social game wasn't as great. So I needed to, to and, and you know, people are, are your best commodity in, in a game such as Survivor. Um, yeah. I, had an opportun- I had an opportunity with my bar where we sp- spent an entire night together um, on the Island of Secrets. And instead of me swallowing my pride at that moment to speak to her 
and um, you know, ask her if she would like to form a totally different alliance at that given point. I waited for her to approach me, but you know, because of my face, I'm I'm too stern. Yeah. You know, who, who would approach me in in this? You know, because the amigos were tight. Um, so I've been thinking of of cutting a breaking away. I actually thought about breaking away with with Jacques as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, we were the two early risers in the camp, and um, we would go watch the sunrise um, on the beach. So we we actually had a very close bond um, up to, and that's, that's probably also one of the reasons why that was such a huge trigger for me. Because you cannot say that you're that close to someone, but then you just start swearing and lash out like that. Um, so, yeah, I, to answer your question, I thought it I thought about it a lot um, and I was just, I was probably too, not too ballsy about making the move until it was yeah. like two tribal councils too late. Yes, so so let's talk about that. You you try to form a counter-alliance there with the female, so obviously with Letitia. Um, I feel like there was a lot with your relationship between Letitia and yourself that we didn't see at all because that sort of came left field at the end of the season when we suddenly saw, oh, okay, Steffi and Letitia is pretty close because we didn't see you guys interact earlier in the show at all. Um, and then you try to bring Nicole in. Now, I asked Letitia this as well when I had her on the show, but, you know, if Rob didn't win that specific immunity that he won and if for any reason he didn't play the idol because it kind of looked like Nicole had him under his her thumb at that point and that he potentially would not have played his idol you know that's kind of what it, how it came across to me um do you believe that nicole would have followed through and she would have still voted to to eliminate rob at that point um obviously you know if i was to ask her this is the latest stage i'm sure she'll deny it but in your opinion do you think that she would have made that move because he won the immunity and then she had to change gears and, and go in a different direction the thing is i hear what you're saying she was on board she was on board, completely on board. And I was too, I was premature, I was acting premature. I, I shouldn't have spoken to her to that early. Mm. I, I should have held on to the idea before the challenge, you know, because um, she had too long to ponder. Yep. And, you know, going up against me um yeah it's a bit it's a bit difficult um because when when we get to the end it's your word against mine everyone mm. gets a fair chance to state their case and i mean i strategically positioned myself to stay under the radar because you can't be a social you can't play a social game and a physical game so you need to be weaker or come um across weaker in one area in order for, for you not to be seen as a nuisance or threat. Hmm. I, I understand you. Now, Rob, he came across as all of those, right? So he was physically really good. He was Rob socially... super manipulative, my friend. <laughs> he, he, I, I could see it. I could see it you definitely know, on the eyes, show. Um, his eyes were... It was a... You know, we need. It was like a compelling force, um, mm. because there's not one person in the game that can tell you, is, except, um, ex except um, Dante, that mm. that was obviously because he's also an alpha male, like a mm. complete alpha male, and Rob is an alpha male, and you know, you you get. As, an, as, as a female, you need to choose which male to align with, you know. Mm. Um, and I would, would have probably clashed with someone like Dante because I'm, I'm just as headstrong as, as he is. Um, yeah. So, yeah, 
I don't know what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I was I was going to ask you. So obviously, ultimately, here at the end, your your vote was for Nicole opposed to voting for Rob. And I'm quite interested, firstly, on what sort of made you gravitate towards voting for Nicole rather. And after seeing the season, you know, obviously, because when you're out there, you don't see it. You're inside of the fishbowl. You don't see everything from outside of it. Would you have changed your vote or are you still sort of sticking to the fact that you believe Nicole deserved that vote at the end of the game? Um, that's one of the questions. And then there's a second one around Nicole that I really wanted to ask you because obviously we didn't see a lot of the conversation at the end tribal and you apologize for getting a bit heated towards her there, but we didn't see a lot of that part of it. Um, you know, she called you someone that betrayed the amigos, but that was pretty fresh coming from her since she betrayed them first when she voted out Nathan. Was that something that you brought up at any point in that final tribal and we didn't potentially see it? Um, so two questions there really around so, Rob so and how he played. To, so with regards to bringing up the past, I didn't do that. Yep. I didn't play that card. Um, did I feel that she deserved to be in the, in the finale? Um, that, that I, that I think that she deserved to win, um, is out of the question because Rob deserved to win. But because yeah. I said that I wanted a female winner this year, I stuck to my guns. Um, there's a lot that I said behind the scenes um, when I voted for her that they cut. Um, yeah, she out she outwitted me, you know. <laughs> and um, sometimes my trust, you know, when you trust someone, because it's a game, you know. I got too emotionally involved. I, I, I let the I let my humanity get the better of me in the game with regards to that in terms of trust um but i mean my 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 back was against the rope against the ropes i was the only one um at that tribal council who was left exposed mm. there were four immunity idols and i was i was the fifth one who had no cover so there was no way that i could that i could could have won no, 100%. You you share that with one of the greatest players to ever play the game in the US, Sarif Fields, who I don't know if you know who she is or not, but she also got outvoted towards the final five because she didn't have anything and everybody else had something. And it's something that the fans really hate, that there's that much advantages that late in the game, which could leave one person exposed. In this case, it did look like the vote was going to go your way regardless, but sometimes it could mean that someone goes home that wasn't even the target at the end of the game there. Um, so... I want to ask you, if you were asked to go out there and play the game again, would you do it? And also, you know, there is a theme that sort of is used over in the U.S. seasons, which is called blood versus water. And a lot of people might not know um, Clint, if they're international, but Clint, uh, your husband, he is someone that is quite famous over in South Africa. And he plays in Binalandish, which my mom is a big fan of. And I'm sure she'll watch this at a later stage. Um, I, I haven't watched it because I've been out of South Africa for so long. But um, would you play it firstly again? Again, and if there was a blood versus water theme out there, would Clint be interested in playing Survivor? Have you spoken to him about it? The thing is, Clint gets very angry, eh? <laughs> um, so it would be a competition. I would obviously ask uh, Clint and my brother, both of them. Uh, my brother has been a huge fan of Survivor. Like we, the two of us, we've watched Survivor since we, you know, could like yeah we my brother's a huge fan the thing with clint is because he's an actor it's difficult for me because would people see him as playing but i think he would be great at playing survivor to be honest with you i think he would be great because he's a he's a very compassionate person he's very patient um He's got all the elements that make him a very likable human being. Mm. So I would I would ask him if he would be interested, but I I do believe he would he would say, you know, why not? Um and, and I take it that you would play again as well if asked to come back for like an all-star season. Survivor South Africa hasn't had an all-star season yet, but I'm sure we're, we're due to see one in the next couple of seasons. Um, would you be interested in going out there and um, getting some redemption? I think that uh, it's an obvious, 
a question yeah. and um and it's it deserves an obvious answer you know because um yeah i mean let's see where the wind blows today i might feel that i would play the game um in five years i might not feel the same um yeah. but when you get on to because there's a lot of elements post after the game the ptsd and all of that um yeah. it is it is quite severe and it, it's intense so um before i step into the game again i just need to make sure that emotionally and mentally i am fit in order to sustain that kind level of pressure 100 percent. I, I hope that you are in that position so we definitely see you play that game again but obviously i understand that's a personal decision that everybody has to make for themselves um i would be gutted not to see you in an all-star season or not to see you in a season that is international where we get like south africans australians in the us or something like that playing i'm hoping we get something like that in the future um another question that i had for you based on the the ptsd and coming out of the show because a lot of um survivors talk about that around the world um what is your advice to those people that are playing the game now the new school players that that is going to play season eight how do you sort of uh, do you have any advice in regards to how they should cope with the fan reception i'm sure to a certain degree you were used to that having a, a famous husband already and obviously having done quite a bit in your own right um but what is your sort of advice to them in regards to um you know getting out of the game and sort of dealing with some of the potentially good pressure and bad comments and things coming their way um we know social media can be pretty cruel at times like um my mother-in-law uh, said she mentioned something on sunday because clint won um a safta on, on 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 saturday thank god <laughs> yeah well um, done but um on sunday we had a conversation and she said um there was this one person that said um any publicity is good publicity even bad publicity so when people mm. speak about you that means that you caught someone's attention and you need you need to use that to your advantage because there are a lot of spin-offs that a few of us in our season slept on um because we dealt with we were too emotional emotionally involved dealing with ptsd um mm. You know, I'm not saying put that on the back burner because it's an intense game, especially when you're a very serious human being and you, mm. you know, it's, it, it can be grueling, <laughs> but yeah. with regards to, um, publicity, right, ride the wave, ride the wave. And, um, at every, at any chance, just, um, just reflect on the game and take the pros and the cons and outweigh, you know, because the pros will always be more than the cons um, for me. Like you, you'll, you can ask any, any player that has been on Survivor. Somewhere in the game, something ticked, um, like something flipped where you, you got some sort of enlightenment where you learned a few lessons about people, about yourself, about your shortcomings, about your strengths. So take the game and, you know, use that as to become as a stepping stone uh, or building block to go higher within yourself. That's great advice. And, um, is there anything that you would like to plug at this point? Anything that people should check out that you are currently doing over on that side? I have, you know, um, obviously prior to talking to you, I've seen on Instagram, you're constantly putting out fitness videos on there and things like that. And, and it's something you're very passionate about. But, you know, is there anything else like where can people follow you? What are you into at the moment? So I just shot a, a few um, training videos um, the, the last couple of, of weeks. And I'm putting out an online training program. So um, if someone would like like that one-on-one -on -one experience um, with me as a trainer, I studied sports science. I've got, I've got, I'm not just a personal trainer. It, like it's, mm. it's for me, 
fitness and and the holistic well-being is all encompassing it's about the mind mm. the body and the soul and you know when you when you work on yourself you need to tackle all the elements because we are such disconnected human beings we we either too physically um, involved in the gym and we don't deal with our emotions and past traumas and all of that, or we we are mentally strong but um, on the on the we are mentally strong but on the physical front we might be lacking or spiritually strong or whatever. So I feel that it's important for all of us for us to to integrate the different elements that really make you um that form you as chris you know yeah. so so that is that is what i'm busy with um and yeah a few other things as well um but that's uh that you should be on the lookout for now Okay, and where can people find out more about this? Is this on your Instagram page or is there a specific place it can go? So my link is Steffi, S-T-E-W-F-I, on the brink, um, on Instagram. Um, I've got a Facebook page as well, Steffi van Weyck Brink. Um, and those are the two two platforms that I that I operate from. I'm, I'm not huge on Twitter. I've got a Twitter account as well. Yeah. But... Um, the two platforms would be um, Instagram and, and Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning about Twitter at the moment. Um, I feel like an old man when I jump on there trying to figure out what's going on in that space. But especially doing this, um, I do find that it's a good place to tweet out if you're, if you're exactly. doing something. And, and, and to get feedback because it's very, it's mu hmm. much more interactive. Um, and yes. it's like you get an answer immediately because it's a, it's a tweet away. You know, so yes. I think I need to up my Twitter skills, tweeting skills. <laughs> do you have a Do you have a TikTok yet, or you're staying away from that for now? Uh, you know, I I love being in control of my time. Yeah, but I I know that TikTok is is the new because it's it's di easily digestible. It's it's five short. fifteen seconds and short. Um, so I will obviously also start finding some content, but I, I won't, yep. I'll stay away from browsing though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand a hundred percent. Now, Steffi, it's been great having you on the show. I will definitely put some of the links in this, the description for this video, for your Facebook page and also for your Instagram. So people can go check that out at any point. Um, also, if you got to this point of the interview, please be sure to subscribe. Um, we are closing in on 800 subscribers and we've only been doing this for about two and a half months. So doing pretty well okay. and um, hoping to get to a thousand so that we can um, get hopefully someone like Leroux Buerta to come on here as well at some point and talk about Survivor South Africa who I've been I've actually been talking to him he's a really nice guy um, off air so really appreciate you guys getting to this point and um, Steffi I appreciate you jumping on if you can stay on for one second I'm going to finish I've off the one, stream I've got one question for yes. you sorry 100% when are you playing Survivor? <laughs> um i don't know yet let, let, let me put it that way like i would love to play i i actually um i entered for new zealand survivor um and i got all the way to the finals the season one but didn't end up getting onto the actual season for that so um i definitely want to play it i think that there is a little bit of difficulty at the moment with uh travel restri restrictions and things like that like for me to go back to south africa now like i know the next season will probably like they'll probably start shooting it soon um i would definitely throw my hat in the ring i don't know if it will be the next season um but who knows you know hopefully i do get an opportunity at some point um nice. and i would love to play it it'd be interesting to play it now that i'm actually talking about the game i don't know how that would go across if i was actually to be out there because i know that's something that jock had to deal with when he went out to go play the show because a lot of people knew that he was talking about the show as well prior to going out there and playing the game no i think but I yeah think i'm open it, to it i think it's it'll be an amazing experience and yeah um i truly hope and my fingers are crossed uh, i'll keep it crossed um <laughs> for you to to play to play the game because it's it's, it's beautiful it's life-changing
I, I appreciate it. Um, I've I've got the endorsement of Steffi. That's all I wanted. You honestly were my favorite female player for the season, and um, I, I've got a feeling that we're we've got a lot of strong females playing this next season. I know you haven't checked it out, but I've got a feeling we might have a female winner coming up. I know it's been a while in Survivor South Africa since the last time that we saw one, so I would love to see someone out there and dominate. There's some early preseason favorites who aren't female but i feel like there's a couple of undercover females that's going to do extremely well this season so look out for for that and if you stay on for one second i will um, tell you how i'm going to share the link with you afterwards thanks for watching guys talk soon